Now we'll talk about long division. And the process of long division is something that you should have seen before at this point in your study of math. You should already be familiar with this. But we're going to look right now at how the process works and how it is a shortcut for repeated subtraction. So let's start with this example. 197 divided by 8. Well, we look at the 8 and we look at, it won't go into a 1, but it will go into 19. So we look at these first two digits. And 8 will go into 19 two times. So I multiply this 2 times this 8, and I write the result down here, and I subtract. 2 times 8 is 16, and I subtract 16 from 19, and I get 3. And that's my shortcut right there for repeated subtraction. Instead of subtracting 2 twice, I multiply by 2 and subtract once. So this is the shortcut right here. That step, actually, it gets repeated uh, once for each decimal place. But it is a lot quicker than doing repeated subtraction. So I, I uh, get my 3 down there. And then I take my 7 and bring the 7 down. So now I have to think, does 8 go into 37? And the answer is yes, 8 goes into 37 4 times. So I put a 4 here. Then I multiply the 4 times the 8 and put the result down there. 4 times 8 is 32, and I subtract and I get 5. There's no more digits over here in my number, so I stop. I have an answer of 24, and there's 5 left over. So this my answer is 24, remainder 5. And a lot of times, you just come up here where you're writing your answer and just put are five like that so your answer your answer appears up here as you work through the problem now let's look at this problem one more time here if I did 197 divided by 8 remember I was looking at the 8 it wouldn't go into the 1 but it can go into 19 so I ended up putting a 2 up there I couldn't put a 3 up there because if I multiply 3 times 8 and put the result down there. 3 times 8 is 24. And when I subtract, I get a negative number. 24 is too big. In other words, 8 will not go into 19 three times. It will go in two times, though. So sometimes it's a bit of a guess to figure out which number to put here. And you might have to come over to the side and just do a little... Um, check over here to see what see if it works or not if your number here ends up bigger than the number above it it doesn't work with um, a one digit divisor it's uh, it's usually pretty easy to tell what number you should put up here but uh, when the when the divisors get bigger sometimes it involves a little bit of guesswork now we got an answer of 24 remainder 5 we can check our answer we should be able to multiply 24 by 8 and then add in the remainder and the result should be our original number 120 197 so let's do 24 times 8 8 times 4 is 32 8 times 2 is 16 and we add that 3 and that gives us a 19 that's 192 and then if we add the 5 you can see that adding 5 to that will give us 197. So the check works. That just verifies that our answer is correct. Here's another example. 374 divided by 6. Well, 6 won't go into 3, but it will go into 37. And you can probably see that it will go in 6 times, because 6 times 6 is 36. So we multiply this by that and we write the result down here and we subtract 37 minus 36 is 1 and then we bring our 4 down right there now 6 you can see will go into 14 two times 2 times 6 is 12 and then 14 minus 12 is 2 so we have an answer of 62 remainder 2 that's our answer and we can check it we should be able to multiply 62 times 6 and then add back in our remainder of 2. So 62 
times 6. 6 times 2 is 12. 6 times 6 is 36, plus the 1 is 37. So I get 372. And you can see when I add the remainder back in there, plus 2, I get 374. So that's, that's my original number. And the check verifies that my answer is correct. 62 remainder 2 is the answer.